I am a machine. The fate we were warned about in The Terminator and The Matrix seemed totally implausible until recently AI was rudimentary, sluggish, and clumsy. Nobody considered its potential to transform the entertainment sector because the technology itself seemed to be mired in the dark ages. But in 2023, all that has changed. AI tools seem to be growing more powerful and more uncanny with each passing day, and huge corporations, Microsoft, Warner Brothers, Meta, and Google are all investing heavily in this beguiling frontier. The future is now, even if we still don't fully understand what humanity has unleashed. Termination authorized. The evidence of this sea change is everywhere, and right now we're witnessing the first seeds of a possible revolution. No more asking Jeeves to look up answers to your questions with his dusty old search engine. Anyone can log onto OpenAI's ChatGPT, which launched last November, and jump into a long, lucid conversation with a burgeoning artificial intelligence. ChatGPT can effortlessly fabricate text in any shape or scale a user might like. Do you want to read a Mission Impossible plot synopsis in iambic pentameter? Well, ChatGPT is up to the task. What about a succession script set on Mars? Well, your dreams of the Roys battling for control of the Red Planet can finally come true. It's safe to say that this technology is not going to go away, especially since studios will look for any way to make TV and filmmaking a little bit cheaper. Hollywood's been a little slower on the uptake, but it definitely has already been used, going all the way back to the Lord of the Rings trilogy where they actually used AI software to help animate some of those big crowd battles. But the rate at which AI technology has been growing over the past year or so is definitely something to keep an eye on, so I do think it will be disruptive. Elsewhere, upstart AI artists are putting image generation software like DAL-E and Midjourney through their paces, creating evocative dreamscapes with an articulate prompt and a few clicks. No, Pope Francis doesn't really have this much drip. This image was built on Midjourney. But what of your ears? Well, 11 Labs Sock Puppet Speech Modulator, which can convincingly reproduce the timbre of living, breathing human beings by uploading a recording of their voice to the server. So if you've ever wondered why Barack Obama, Joe Biden, and Donald Trump have recently put political differences aside to play Overwatch together, well, AI strikes again. Everyone knows what really happened. Are you still on that shit, Donald? Is that why you've been stalking me in GTA Online? All of these elements have already led to some genuinely fascinating entries into the canon of the early AI revolution. On Twitch, viewers are tuning into Nothing Forever, a psychedelic procedurally generated Seinfeld parody operated by Mismatch Media that stars a group of 30-something burnouts who concoct an endless suite of gags and one-liners for the audience. Nothing Forever is on the air 24 hours, seven days a week, and in just three months on Twitch, it's produced more content than all the seasons of The Office and Parks and Recreation combined. It's also been temporarily canceled for producing transphobic content, proving that AI definitely still has a long way to go when it comes to self-moderating. Of course, if problematic fake sitcoms aren't your cup of tea, you can flip over to Always Break Time, a bubbly slice of life anime set in a pastel laden high school classroom, which is also written, performed, and designed entirely by a ghost in the machine. Both of these shows are clearly proof of concepts and not without myriad drawbacks. AI has yet to firmly supplant our television habits and the generative plot lines on both this artificial sitcom and anime lack the same robustness of the screenplays written by people with, you know, uh, lived experiences. But the fact that they're coherent at all is enough to make experts wonder if in the next few years, AI software will earn a seat in Hollywood writer rooms. The first frontier is the memes that are going viral on Twitter timelines, the videos that stop us in our tracks and make us ponder the potential of the technology. But there's a reason to believe that we're only at the tip of the iceberg. So we see it in fall, where, which is a movie that like 12 people watched, but it was a rated R horror movie that was then shifted to PG and they used AI to alter the actresses' faces to make it seem like they were saying different dialogue to remove any rated R language. That doesn't just solve for when we're in rated R situations that need to move down to PG-13, which in and of itself is a bad decision for most cases regardless, but it also helps with subbing and dubbing when we send it to international countries when when we're presenting films in different languages. <laughs> It's 
it helps create a better user experience for the viewer. So yeah, there's totally situations where AI can be used for positive reasons within entertainment. Again, the problem is, is we're just not regulating it right now. It's important to note that AI is already impacting the entertainment industry through all sorts of smaller, more specific avenues. When Netflix Japan had a difficult time sourcing artists for the background imagery on a new anime short called The Dog and the Boy, the company turned to AI in order to fill out the sets. We're already seeing Hollywood use AI enhanced visual effects to do things like de-age Harrison Ford in Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and on more ethically shaky ground, casting a digitally resurrected version of James Dean in a Vietnam War film. That project has since been canceled, but with movies like Rogue One already proving that companies as big as Disney are willing to bring back beloved actors using the tech, no matter what, it seems like not even death will be able to stop dream casting in the future. The ensuing ethical quandaries seem obvious. If more studios take the Netflix route and build background sets with the assistance of machine learning, how will that affect the countless artists and creatives in the business who would suddenly find themselves out of a job? If network sitcoms generate all of their scripts and plot lines from ChatGPT, what impact will that have on the career of an up and coming screenwriter? Animation workers are actually some of the entertainment professionals who are most concerned about the implications of AI. There's already been at least one occasion of a studio using AI in anime, in which Netflix Japan recently used computer generated backgrounds in a short called Dog and the Boy. But I recently talked to a lot of animators who are seriously really worried about not only studios using AI to replace artists, but also about their work essentially being stolen by being fed into AI models. It's an industry that's already been pretty marginalized within entertainment, so AI is just one more thing that's adding to their anxieties. Entertainment unions are already gearing up for that fight. The WGA has already said it's moving to regulate the use of material produced by AI models, and the Screen Actors Guild confirmed that AI-altered performances will be something they expect productions to negotiate with actors. These are smart initiatives, but only time will tell whether AI will enhance the stories artists in Hollywood are telling, or if the technology will try to remake all of entertainment in its own image. Like everything in the AI era, the prospects are simultaneously exciting and ominous. Is it possible for Hollywood to minimize AI's negative impact? Totally, uh, but not really. The thing is, is it's not on Hollywood. AI affects everything. While Hollywood does need its own sort of specific regulations within it, it also requires a sort of government involvement that's making sure that the things that I'm talking about in the specific Hollywood instances aren't happening elsewhere as well. Like we see it as Buzzfeed is moving into, like some of our content is created by AI. That's not a valid user experience, first of all. And it's, it's a replacement of jobs that we're not taking care of for the people who are actually doing them. Yes, Hollywood is capable of doing it, but most of Hollywood is made up of corporations. It has to come from a government scale that moves into corporate regulation that changes those negative impacts.